One of the interesting things about Fort Chart is that it's, it's formerly was um, intended to be a major center in the heart of North America. In 1719, the, the French uh, started the colony by building a fort, which they named Fort Chart for the King of, of France, and established it uh, on the banks of the Mississippi. Unfortunately, they didn't understand the Mississippi River very well. The early historical documentation is fairly sparse, but we know that in about 1720, the first of several wooden forts was constructed on the banks of the Mississippi. We know that uh, several of these were uh, prone to flooding and eventually were in disrepair, and that the fort was rebuilt at least once. But some of the documentation also uh, kind of hints at the fact that the fort was relocated up onto what the French termed the prairie. Uh, the village kept getting rebuilt. This is a lot of the research of Margaret Brown, who looked at the record, deed records, and uh, basically created a, a map or schematics. You know. So what we're trying to also do is uh, try to confirm the locations of where she thought some of the lot lines would be and hopefully be an ongoing thing. 1983, 1984, uh, several archaeologists conducted limited text excavations over there, which revealed what they suspected were the remains of ditch fort and wall fortifications. Our goal was to follow up on that and confirm this, and so while we knew that there was a probable fort located there, we didn't know if this uh, was first fort, second fort, third fort, and that's been the argument all along. We suspected this is probably the location of Fort 3, which is the fort that was moved up out of the floodplain and onto the prairie. And uh, while the earlier excavations gave us some idea of the presence of outer fortification walls, ditches, trenches, we have very little information, either through historical documents or through the excavations as to the interior structure of the fort or details of the interior. So with the acquisition of the new geophysical technology at ISAS, we felt that this was an excellent case to go ahead and survey that to uh, see if we could augment the excavation data and also in a non-invasive manner to learn something more about uh, the possibility of any remains uh, of the fort or interior structures. It's not like Jurassic Park in the movie where they saw the dinosaur on its side and you can see all the bones. Remote sensing doesn't do that. That's Hollywood all the way. Geophysical survey is, is a way to, uh, at least in terms of archaeological uses of it, is the way to look at the ground without having to uh, excavate or, or uh, you get broad area, in most cases, uh, uh, perspective of uh, various changes in the soil, things that were uh, changed by humans in the past, like ditches or pits that were dug, old house foundations. First of all, you get young people <laughs> who can walk all day, carry this thing. And uh, uh, what we do is we divide a side up into grids, you know, and in this case we've been using, lately we've been using uh, 20 by 20 meters on a side for a grid. and uh, two of the crew manage ropes, and one of the crew actually carries the instrument on a harness. Now you have to carry it very carefully. You have to carry it smooth and even. And it is a game changer because you don't, you can see both walls of the fort, for instance, and other interior features. There's other interesting anomalies and structures that are uh, showing up outside the fort, uh, you know, that we would never know were there. It's an image of the overall survey that we did in the village of Deschards and over uh, uh, Fort 3. We sort of orient you. Uh, to the right is the footprint of, uh, of, the, of the French fort, 1732 to about uh, 1753. There are three really bright, or two really bright areas uh, that have a dark spot in the middle. Those are, those are datums that were set in the ground uh, from the excavations in the early 1980s. You've got a wall, a line of posts, uh, set in a trench. It's kind of hard to see here on the left side. 
and you have another one way over here that appears to be another line of posts, probably the other side of the fort. Black looking anomalies are probably fire pits or uh, features. There's probably a well out there. There was a well out there. So these, some of these dark anomalies like here or here or perhaps that one could represent uh, locations of the well. You got also lighter lines. Uh, and these are uh, anomalies of low magnetic intensity. Uh, things like limestone uh, will, isn't magnetic. And uh, so if you have a limestone foundation, it'll actually show as a low instead of a high. And you have some lines showing up right up in this area here. You also got some you know, interior lines that are lighter. You know, if, if they were limestone, it's sort of a guess. Or it's a trench that didn't get filled with organic matter. Uh, showing up inside the fort. The great things about this uh, data is the ease of, of acquisition and the software now has come up where it can be processed pretty easily so we can download some results in the field and look at it almost on the fly and this helps us adjust our survey strategies. The significance of this is that I think we've confirmed that this is probably the location of Fort 3. Um, and also as significant is the fact that we know now that there are substantial subsurface remnants uh, or deposits uh, associated with the fort. We need to be able to look at sites without disturbing them or in cultural resource management it's nice to know what's there ahead of time so decisions can be made as to what what is going to be excavated, what's going to be left in place, the costs of excavating something. It gets us maps that are, are much more detailed of sites than, than uh, what we had before when your way of learning about a site was to open it up. This has been a production of the Illinois State Archaeological Survey.